Good morning. This is the Slaves Master. I was I was requested, asked, to do a pro and con of the flat bench press and then the arch bench press. Which one's safer? Which one's better? The pros and cons. Okay. We'll start with a flat bench press first. Say you got a Roman bridge. A Roman concrete then was stronger than our concrete is today. They used volcanic ash to make it stronger. And when they built stuff in the water, they add pig blood or some kind of animal blood, something like that, in a mix. That way they can build columns and boat docks out in the water. Okay. Over thousands of years, this concrete, it got so strong and so hard, if you shoot a bullet into it, a high power bullet, it's going to come into it just a little bit or make a big chip. You know what I'm saying? And today's concrete, which the reason I said that because I rep it represents the flat bench press. Okay? The flat bench press is better on your back and you have more foundation, say, under a bridge. Under the bridge, you've got a foundation. It's flat. When you build that bridge... You had a, just a little bit of an arch. Just a little. It's a natural arch. Okay? It's safe. It's a safe arch. And it's real strong. Because there's a centerpiece at the top of the arch that's been put together by stones and Roman concrete. Okay? Remember, your body is the bridge. The concrete's underneath, which is your bench. Okay? A flat bench. The bench should never be no more, should never be wide. It should always be narrow, between nine and a half to 11 inches wide. I want to stress that to the companies out there that's making these benches. You're making them wide, you're putting a lot of stress on people's shoulders when you're doing a regular flat bench press. The what you call the normal bench press. The normal bench press actually is safer than the arch. Okay, I'll get to that here in a minute. When you got just a notch, when you're laying flat on the bench, you got that just a little bit of an arch. It's normal. Okay, this video this video is gonna be a little bit long. I'll try to make it too long. But you got that normal arch. Your butt's on the bench, your back's on the bench, your shoulders are on the bench, and when your feet is on the bench or off the side of the bench, you got a wide base. That is you saw the foundation. Not tiptoed, it's flat. When you do a foundation of a house <laughs> under the block, you don't do a rolling foundation. It's flat. It better be flat. <laughs> Your house ain't going to stand. All right. Uh, so when you're doing the flat foundations like your feet flat on the floor. You got a concrete foundation under the bridge, which is flat. Then you got you arch of a bridge, like a Roman bridge, is slightly arched to handle the weight, handle the stress of whatever's going across it. And you've got that one little uh, block in the center that's holding almost, almost of the weight of the bridge. Uh, the concrete, like I said, was lost when the barbarians attacked Rome. When they attacked Rome, a lot of the literature was destroyed. So for almost, for over just under 2,000 years, or close to 2,000 years, the formula for, for concrete was gone. So I don't remember the guy's name in the 1800s. You have to do the little research on your own. He came up with a formula again for concrete. But he didn't use volcanic ash. He didn't use animal blood, especially when he was building something in the water. Okay. When you build something with modern day concrete, over a certain period of time, it's going to deteriorate. It's going to put a lot of stress. If you got too much of an arch on modern day concrete, it's going to get, sometime or another, it's going to crack and give way. It's not as strong as the old Roman concrete. Okay, the flat bench. 
Here is the con of a flat bench. First of all, stupidity. When a lot of people are bench pressing on a flat bench, lots of times when they don't have a workout partner, they're, they're, they're leaving the columns on the bar. Okay? When they're leaving the columns on the bar, bar, on the bar it ain't so much the bench. The flat bench is causing the problem. It's the people on the bar. That has the bar and has the columns. So when they, when they leave the columns on and they do a few reps and they get trapped, the first thing they want to do is rope down their body. Never do that. It's so dangerous you can hurt something, you can hurt something internally. Beginners, intermediate, or professional level people. This is mostly for intermediate, but this is for everybody. So what you want to do is tilt the bar, let the weight slide off, leave your clamps off, let the weight slide off, when you're doing it by yourself, you do not have a workout partner. Slide it off. And as soon as it slides off, let it go. Okay, that way it's the safest way to do the bench. Sometimes stupidity is what causes a lot of injuries on the flat bench. Not because you're doing a flat bench press press. Okay. Uh, when you are, say, you're on a bench that's wide. Over a period of time, this is the cons now, when you're doing the bench press on a wide bench, it's putting pressure on that shoulder. And it can cause shoulder injury over a period of time. So that's the reason I tell you companies, make a narrow bench. That way when you bench press, the, the shoulders can come in on each side of the bench, come down and back up. There's hardly no stress on the shoulder. Okay, if you bench it right and you go up weight slowly like you're supposed to anyway, you shouldn't be putting a lot of weight on that uh, shoulder anyhow. Okay, when you got a wide bench, when your shoulders come down, you're coming all the way down, but your shoulders are up against that bench and it's putting pressure on that shoulder joint. So, you companies, I stress, make the bench narrow. Even your incline bench, make it narrow. You people who go to the gyms, if they have a wide bench and that's all they got, I can understand. But try to, try to explain to them, hey, we need a narrow bench. Okay? It's easier on our shoulders. Now, these are, these are not people that ask me to do this. They're not, cry, they're not crying over it or nothing. They're just trying to say, hey, you know, doing a bench press, and art, regular bench press normal, and an arch bench press in competition is really... It's hurting the regular people doing the regular bench press. I don't know yet if they have a separate category. A separate category is where they have the arch bench press and they have a separate category with their normal regular bench press. I'll get to that here in a minute. Okay, the pros of the flat bench press is where you come all the way down, full range of motion, and you come all the way back up, you'll build a big, strong, muscular chest. Okay, that's the pros. The cons is where the bench is too wide. Cons is where you're, you're doing stupidity stuff to make the, to make the exercise more dangerous. Okay, let's, uh, in case I have to hit back on it, man, I will. Let's go to the arch bench press. The arch bench press is where your shoulders are on the bench, your back has got a wide, uh, big curve in it. Just like you say a arch bridge. A bridge is real curvy. The center stone and all the stones are made out of modern day concrete. Or they make a bridge that's only got a slight curve to it or even a uh, or even a big curve to it made out of modern day concrete over a period of time it's going to crack. It's going to wear out. So what I'm trying to say is especially when you're doing that arch bench press you're putting a lot of weight on them shoulders. I don't care if you if you got wide or narrow, you're putting a lot of weight on them shoulders. And not to mention, the picking weight is only that far off the chest. You can put, that's the cons, I'll get to in a minute. But when you're pushing that weight off the chest, you're going beep, beep. It's only a short distance compared to somebody in competition that's going to full range of motion. If your organizations and, and, uh, your organizations and your federations do not have a separate category, 
thinking about have one. Because if somebody's doing 400 pound bench press full range of motion, it's harder on them to get it up. Or even 500 pounds, and somebody who's doing this, they're doing beep, beep. In other words, a short range of motion. They can push more weight in a short range of motion than you can a full range. Okay? And not to mention, they put a lot of stress on that backbone. When you bend a board, it's the same thing. When you bend a board, where's it going to break? When you put a lot of stress on that back, on that board, where's it going to break? When you got concrete and any kind of an arch made of modern day concrete, where's it going to break most of the time? Right in the center. Okay? And that's just made out of Roman concrete. And I know today they use steel and everything in the concrete, but still, you see a lot of stress marks and cracks in those bridges over a period of time. So that's the same thing with the arch. When you're doing a when you're doing an arch bench press, if you don't if you don't get if you don't have a slip desk just in a short period of time, over a long period of time, you have a problem with it. Okay, it will cause problem over a long period of time. I seem, I, you know, I'm going on experience. 36 years of experience, I have no way to share it with any kid because I have no child of my own. Hard to find a good lady to have a child with, the way women used to be a long time ago. God fearing good women. And I only know one or two that I've ever, that I've ever in a relationship with. But anyway, it's a different story. But I've got family to pass it on to if they'll listen. I have no kids to pass it on to, so I'm passing it on to you people. So after 36 years, you see people do stupid stuff. And as a trainer, sometimes I'll go over and i say, hey, you know, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm trying to help you. You need to do it this way. If you want to, that way you'll be safer. That's just a trainer in me. Uh... With 36 years of knowledge, and anybody else who has a lot of knowledge, they've seen a lot of different stuff. They did a lot of different stuff in their exercises. From the time I was 14 up to this day, I have always researched amino acids, which is a basic building block of all life, proteins, calories. Um, I even researched steroids and drugs, and that's one reason I stayed away from them. It's from the time I was 14 up to this day. And it's best to stay away from them. Because that's another thing that will cause you problems physically. Okay. Uh, so the best research that you can do is do it yourself. Or actually the best thing to do is watch somebody else. When you watch somebody else, you see what they're going through. That way you don't have to go through the same thing. There's been very little, very little research done on arch bench press. So sometimes all you got to go on is experience of somebody what somebody else knows. That way you don't have to do it yourself and go through a lot of future pain and agony. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes it's best to listen to somebody older because they have the experience. It's great to be young, great to be healthy, great to be strong and endurance, but there's no amount of youth that can replace experience. No amount of youth. Now, even somebody older can learn from a little bit from somebody younger if they have an open mind. You can always teach an old dog new tricks if they're willing to learn. If they're not, they ain't learned nothing over the years. So it's the same thing with somebody younger. Listen to somebody older that's been doing it for a lot of years, and most of the time you can't go, more, you can't go wrong. But whatever that person tells you, you do your own research anyway. Okay? So we get to the arch. We're doing the arch sprint press. You're up on your tiptoes, you got your feet back. That's not a good foundation. And that way, when you do that, there's no, there's not as much energy flow coming through from your legs, from the floor to your legs, up for you, up for your midsection, to your chest, to your arms. Now, what does that give you that what does give you advantage? This is this just a pro in the arch bench press. The pro of it. It's where you're way up here, you've got a short distance, you can, only, you can push a large amount of weight within a short distance. And that's not, that's not right or fair for the person that's doing the normal bench press. So that's the reason I said they need to have two categories. 
So when you're up on your toes like it's here, that you don't have a good foundation, your butt's touching the bench, you got a great big arch, your shoulders are on the bench like this, even if you're pushing that real heavy weight in a short amount of distance, you put a lot of so uh, pressure on them shoulders and on that backbone. Where when you lay them flat, everything is even and distributed. Okay, your energy's coming from your feet up through your midsection to your chest up. Okay, but that's the only, actually that's the only pro to the arch bench press is when you got a big arch in your back, it's a short amount of distance. And usually it's just a short amount of distance. When you do a, when you do a flat bench press, it's a long range distance. And, it, and it's not as easy to push that heart, uh, the large amount of weight at a long distance as a short distance. Uh, even if you're doing the arch bench press, you still want to use a neural bench. If you're going to continue to use it. Now, I'm not the type of, I mean, a lot of people take me wrong sometimes, and I've said this in some other videos. When I talk about something, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm trying to help you. I have no other person to pass my knowledge on to. I have no, no kids whatsoever. Uh, I wanted them, but you know, it's hard to find a good lady to have kids with. And when you do find a lady, you got, you got women in the church saying a lot of stuff that's not true. You got a mommy telling her stuff that's not true. Then, but that's the way it goes. But anyway, uh, and I also I didn't mention no names. It don't matter. This video is about the bench pressers. I kind of get off one thing going to the other. So forgive me on that. Uh, so the cons of the flat bench press, you put too much stress on the middle of the back and on the shoulders. Over a period of time, that can cause problems. And actually, and you're talking about experience, I have seen people get hurt, slip disc, or hurt their back, or hurt their shoulder, doing, and they were doing correct, what they call correct form for a arch bench press. Okay, anytime you're doing anything in extreme to your body, a lot of people say, well, what about gymnastics? A lot of those gymnastics, they, have, they are real flexible. A lot of them are double jointed. They are flexible. That's what they were bred to do. That's their, that is their nature. That is their gift. But the difference is, they're not putting a lot of weight on their back. When they're doing this arch, they're not got a lot of weight in their back. They're just, they're just body weight. Okay? And I also stress about stretching. You can two ways of stretching. You can do the, if I can remember the word right, dynamic stretching. Say if you're stretching and you're kind of moving like this, you're on one leg and you got your leg back, and you're kind of doing this, okay, keep movement, but you're stretching. And you got what most of the times I do, as if I can pronounce it right, is sporadic stretching. And that's where I put my legs behind me, okay, underneath me rather. My knees are this way, and I fold back. And what I do, I'm stretching those joints, I'm stretching those muscles, trying to get them loosened up. Because when you stretch, either, either way you stretch, okay, it keeps the mobility in your muscles and in your joints. Some people say it's not here for you to stretch. It is. It's up to you if you want to do the stratic, I think that's how to pronounce it, stretching and the dynamic stretching. It's up to you. I've done it both ways for 36 years. Since I was 14, I was taught at an early age to stretch. I was taught at an early age to wrap those elbows, okay, and wrap your knees. I didn't learn later to use the belt, but that was a little later. That's probably about a year later. So when you're stretching, you're getting everything loose and limber. Now, some people, they want to do the straight at stretching. It starts with an S. Uh, when they're doing the powerlifting, weightlifting. So a lot of people who are doing the running, they want to do the dynamic stretching. I think I'm, I think I'm pronouncing this right. Okay. Uh, so that's the pros and cons of the arch. The cons of the arch bench press, you are adding 70, 70 to 75 potential injury to your back, to your shoulders. Like I said, there's very little research is done on this. Very little. 
So you have to try to you have to try to learn from other people who done it for a lot of years, if that's what you want to do. And if you don't want to listen, you go do what you want to do. Okay. And but uh, if something happens, uh, you've been told. So best way to learn is learn from somebody who's done it for a lot of years. That way you don't have to go through the pain and agony. <laughs> that even goes for drugs. I've never, like I said in my other video, I've never had to go through pain and agony of drugs because I never did use them. I stayed natural. I've always been natural. 14 to I'm 50 years old now. If you want to build a big, strong, muscular chest, full range of motion is the best. If you want to build big biceps, full range of motion is the best. Uh, the flat bench press. The potential danger of a flat bench press between 5 and 10 percent. That's pretty darn low. The potential of having a, uh, of having a safe bench press flat is 90 to 95 percent. Only reason what makes it hard or makes it dangerous is people stupidity. What they're doing when they're doing the bench. That's the only thing that really makes it dangerous. And like I said, the potential injury of a arch bench press is 70 to 75 percent. Why would you want to do that anyway to put stress on there? Just because you get a few inches? Just cause a few inches? Is it worth destroying your back and your shoulders over? You know, I haven't done this for 36 years for, for not to learn anything. I've done this a long time. There's some people out there that's got more experience than I do, and some people out there that's got less. Uh, the pro of the arch bench press, like I said, is bench pressing a short distance. When you got that chest way up in there, or way up in there, and you back up in the air, it's the same thing. So please, try to be cautious. If you want to experiment with both, that's fine. Beginners, do not experiment with the bridge, with the arch, or the bridge bench press. I, I, I employ you, do not experiment with it. Stay away from it, every way that you possibly can. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm trying to help you. I'm just asking you to just to listen. Okay. Uh, trying to think of something else here. If there's anything I left out, uh, always remember uh, to do your stretching either one way or the other. Uh, most of the time, I don't do the bouncing stretching. I do the when you're still. I've, I've done it for a lot of years. Never had a problem with it. And I've done it both ways, and I squat the same amount of weight. Or I did lift the same amount of weight. So it really don't mean squat. But it's up to you which one you want to do. But I do advise you to stretch no matter what. Then do, it, do at least two warm-up sets before you get to your medium weight. Then go to your heavy weight. Uh, but, try to take, but try to take it serious. About when I'm talking about the arch bench press and a flat bench press. Remember, between that two, between those bones and your backbone, there's only a there's only a jelly-like substance that keeps that bone from rubbing together. Okay, we most of the time we don't have the Roman concrete that keeping everything together. We got modern day concrete, which wears out a lot quicker. Uh, there was something else I wanted to. One to hit on. I'm trying to remember. Like I said, I don't go by script or anything. This is out of my head. Okay. Until I'm thinking something else, I'm going to be doing a video tomorrow on push-ups. Different types of push-ups. Okay. And this is a request. He's kind of like a celebrity. He called me last week. And um, I've always watched him on the computer. But he's like a celebrity. That Pixel Dan. Pixel Dan is a P-I-X-E-L Dan. You got toy ploy, and you got uh, uh, toy, cool toys, and but anyway, what they are, they're collectors, and they have a lot of knowledge and experience at collecting figures. So his name was Hebro. He called me last week. H e slash b r o. Hebro. 
go check him out on uh, YouTube. And uh, he has a lot of knowledge in this stuff. But he's like a celebrity, like some of the ones I mentioned. And he was something, I'm a collector. So I collect figures and antiques and I collect a lot of different stuff. So uh, I just started watching these videos back in November, this past November. And I told him I would do, he asked me, he called me up and asked me if I would do uh, the uh, demonstrate the push-up. So I'm going to demonstrate it four or five different ways, okay? There's four or five different ways to do the push-up. Uh, some of them are similar, some of them not. So uh, it's like talking to the celebrity. So if you want to go look him up, it's he bro on YouTube. And uh, he's got a quite a uh, wonderful collection. But take your bench presses, take your workouts serious. Always use form, safety, and caution. And use your common sense. Quit doing the stupidity stuff and use your common sense, okay? And uh, your organizations, your federations out there, I'm not asking that you have to, but I'm asking it would be fair to have people a different category with the arts bench press, just a different category. I don't, if you have it already, I apologize. If you did, I don't know. I didn't know anything about it. As far as I know, I, I don't know any organization or federation that has the the arts bench press category separate from the no more regular bench press category because they're only pushing weights from a short distance. And like I said, a regular bench press, you fall in full range of motion. That's not right. And that's not fair to have those people compete together in one category. All right, and uh, if you want to keep them having the art bench press, be honest, be honest with you, I, I would suggest not to let people even do it because it's that one time that that backbone can give out or that shoulder can give out because when you're pushing that weight on that shoulder and you're on that shoulder, there's a lot of pressure on that shoulder. At least the fat bench press, your weight is distributed and you got a solid foundation. Remember that. All right. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing the push-up request from Hebro and uh, remember stay off the drugs you possibly can I love everybody wrap your knees wear your belt when you medium to heavy weight and use some common sense all right this is from the uh, 1993 mr. Louisville this is uh, also from 2017 world champion <coughs> from the uh, IPL and state and national champion of the USPA and hopefully soon get to compete in the USPC United States Powerlifting Coalition all right we love you take care God bless and be good to each other that's what we're here for that's the reason God put us here was to be good to each other save people's souls and show them how to do that and obey God all right love you take care and uh hope you like my buddy on here oh that reminds me even if you companies out there or any business that want me to advertise for your shirt on video, you let me know. You go to James P. Justice, one, one, uh, James Dot Justice, J U S T I C E, 172 at gmail.com. And if you want to represent your products on my meal videos, contact me on there. I'll call you, or you can call, I'll give you a phone number. You can call me or whatever, in a way, and we'll talk. All right. Love everybody, take care, and uh, thank you for viewing my videos, and uh, let me know that you care, because I care about you, or I wouldn't be doing this. Like I said, I have no family to pass this on to other than brothers and sisters. I have no kids of my own, so, but that's another issue. All right, love you, take care, bye.